Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is an honor to be here, Rashi. I, and I'm so grateful that uh, a number of speakers who have spoken before and member states have highlighted that we have a real challenge ahead. And this challenge uh, in, comes in different shapes and sizes. Uh, in September, we will actually see not just a new strategy for addressing the development goals globally, but it, it's a paradigm shift. Effective January 2016, all governments will have to start changing their national development plans to align themselves with the SDGs. And I would like to keep, uh, focus my remarks on the actions perhaps we might take based on the policy dimensions which have been agreed or being discussed and a number of uh, speakers have reiterated issues relating to governance, transparency, inclusive growth, and different sectors as well. The ambassador of the UAE pointed out that we do not have adequate ODA resources. Uh, it runs about at 130 billion a year. Foreign direct investment, on the other hand, runs at about 1.5 trillion, depending on what numbers you take. And the reality is that the SDGs, if you were to address them comprehensively, the infrastructure investment required ranges, depending on the estimate, five to seven trillion dollars. And we know that when we started the MDGs way back in 2000, even the OECD targets which we had picked up originally, member states committed to do things, they said, yes, we will provide resources. In today's financial crisis, I'm afraid we would be lucky to direct ODA beyond 150 billion, if you're lucky. So we really need new mechanisms, new financing mechanisms, and, I, and I'm really pleased that the Financing for Development Conference is actually looking at not just the traditional ways of addressing all problems, but looking at international public finance, international private sector, as well as domestic public and private finance. And if we look at that aspect of it, Mr. Chairman, uh, we need to make it to incentivize the private sector to say, in a very uh, inelegant way, what's in it for me? The private sector has a first responsibility to its shareholders. The poor are potential consumers for them, and therefore stakeholders. And we like to feel that if we can find ways to make it attractive for the private sector and build kind of a new deal, a new global deal, a new global partnership for sustainable development, we might make some inroads. Institutional investors and sovereign wealth funds, for example, who up to now have been on the outside of the MDG process, and maybe in some respects the SDG process, uh, they are looking at it and saying, what is the return on investment for us? Incidentally, they hold between 80 and 90 trillion dollars worth of assets. Pension funds up to now have only invested about 3% of their assets for sustainable development. So we would like to recommend a couple of things here. Uh, that the UN might wish to consider creating an SDG innovation fund a fund that uses the talent of young people to find solutions to all problems, but at the same time uses the power of the private sector, uses the power of institutional investors and sovereign wealth funds to invest in the poor. $66 billion uh, to address poverty alleviation 
will barely touch the surface. There are a number of actions which are already being taken, which are uh, really uh, critical to this process, is how do you address the flow of remittances? How do you address a new and growing phenomena of private development assistance? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I had the privilege of managing the fund, uh, the donation made by Mr. Ted Turner when he provided $1 billion. After that, a number of major philanthropists came forward, uh, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which is a big supporter of the Gavi Alliance and so on. In the US, charitable giving runs at $320 billion. Very little goes to international development assistance. So we need to make, make, it, make a good case for it, if you like, that if they invest in developing countries, it is beneficial not just for economic and social welfare, but for national and global and regional security. Mr. Chairman, aside from the SDG Innovation Fund, I, there is a, a, a new phenomenon, a new trend which is taking place, which is called blended finance. I, that's the, if you like, the pooling of public and private resources. Again, under the overarching theme which you have, the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development, where public and private funds come together and implement new partnerships, bringing together a broad range of stakeholders. Not the traditional public-private partnerships, but kind of what I uh, determine as multi-stakeholder partnerships. On our part, we are, to address some of these issues, we are planning to create a partnerships portal where we would provide information on projects so that NGOs and civil society organizations can upload their information on a virtual platform and prospective funders can look at it and say they can invest in it even bilateral agencies, multilateral agencies, etc., would find it useful, and we intend to use the power of new technologies to create that, uh, what we call a kind of Google for development. Mr. Chairman, finally, uh, we are also looking to create a center of excellence for partnerships, because uh, while partnerships are not new to the UN or to the international community or at the national level, Often there is confusion when you expect private sector financing. It is the attitude of saying, okay, you just give me the money and I'll spend it uh, without the attendant governance process. Uh, the, the debate currently is not about the 17 SDGs or the 169 targets. It's about means of implementation. It's about monitoring and evaluation in the same way as the private sector looks not just for return of capital, but return on capital, multilateral institutions, institutional investors in the same way will be looking to see how they can uplift the quality of lives of the underprivileged and create real sustainable development. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.